Welcome back to a brand new section, and already we're on our way. We have already a library that's functional, and we've worked with quite a few design patterns. This section is going to be all about the facade design pattern, where we're going to explore it and get to know what it is and how it works. We're going to update our library and use the design pattern, and we're also going to create an advanced facade design pattern that will enable us to make all of our variables by default private. This is a really powerful feature, and it's a very fun session. So let's jump right into the first lecture in this section, and that is to introduce the facade design pattern. By the end of this lecture, we're going to hide everything away from the user, creating a pattern that will hide all the adapters that we've created in previous sections. Really what we want is the users to always see the same object, not even knowing that they're different in any way, because they're not, it's going to be the exact same object. So the first step now that we're ready to move into the facade is we want to create global facade object. Now this global facade object is I'm going to place it right above our native query because really it's going to represent both native query, sizzle adopter, jQuery adopter, and any other adopter we create in the future. In many ways what we're doing is, is we're hiding away these adopters and letting the user interact only with one object. This one object I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call it a query facade. And I'm going to go ahead and create the function. Really what we want to do is we want to send the library that we're working with or the adopter that we're working with. And I'm going to call it, you know, so let's call it adopter. Let's go ahead and put it right underneath the native query. So it's like right above all those different elements. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm creating this adopter and I'm going to go ahead and just create a private, not really private, but a property which will gain access to the adopter. Once we have access to this adopter, we could start creating the methods. So let's go ahead and start creating, first of all, the query method. I'm going to go ahead and just copy the query structure itself. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I'm approaching the actual query facade. So now that we have the structure in place, the next step, really the most basic step, is to just return the value that is coming back from that adopter. And I'm going to go ahead and just send in the same information that is being sent in function constructor. Now, this is not good enough because if we do this and the user approaches and calls the query, the problem with that is that we're not really returning the query facade. We're returning the adopter itself because the return value is the adopter. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this with a new query facade. By doing that, I'm basically making sure that the returned value is always going to be a query facade. All right, so that step is configured. The next step is let's go ahead and also create the text function. And for the text function, we don't really need to wrap it because we're returning strings back, or the goal is to be returning strings back. So I'm going to go ahead and return a string back, which will be basically this dot adapter dot text and send inside the value. And we've just created the two functions. So in this lecture, we created a facade design pattern, but we're not done yet. Because if you recall, when we created our objects initially in that onReady method, we actually manually set them and created them. We need to figure out a solution for that. And that's exactly what we're going to do in the next lecture as we create a facade creator that will change the game completely. So we'll see you in the next lecture when we create a facadinator.